I am going to quickly recollect the uh, points we discussed in the video on authorship. How do you determine authorship of uh, technical work and uh, how to determine the order, who is the author, who is not an author and so on. So firstly, who is an author of a technical work? The important thing is they should have made a significant intellectual contribution, that is very important. An author of a technical work is somebody who has given intellectual contribution. Intellectual means they should have planned the work, they should have executed the work or they should have analyzed the results. So this is the intellectual contribution. Some people may think that writing is also intellectual. While you can argue that writing is uh, intellectual, but usually writing, writing can be both ways. Somebody has written it roughly and then you work on it and improve it, that is not so much, but somebody who has not done anything in the work and just writing, just formatting, just putting the tables, putting the figures, drawing plots is not necessarily an intellectual contribution. Similarly, it can happen that somebody has just given you an idea. You go and you go to a conference or you go to uh, discuss something with somebody else and while you present your uh, work, they say that why do not you try this, this might work. And then you go and try it, it worked. You did all the hard work and that person comes and tells you, I gave you the idea, you should have my name on your paper what will you say? So, not sufficient that you just give an idea. Idea anybody can give, it might just fail also, right. Maybe there is an intellectual contribution in giving the idea, it is not a just random guess, but many uh, ideas can fail. So, in general it is not considered a significant contribution. It is an intellectual contribution, but it is not a significant intellectual contribution. And more importantly, the author should own responsibility. Now, I might have given you an idea to work on. You did it, it worked, okay. You are going to put, you are saying you should put my name because you think it was I who gave you the idea, but I might have a different opinion. I need to own a responsibility of what you have done. You claim that you have done a certain experiments. Now, how do I know that what you did is right? So, I am very uncomfortable if you put my name in that work for which I do not even know what you have done. I have only given an idea, very broad idea which could be stated in why do not you try this, it might work, which hardly takes 10 seconds to tell. But you have spent a whole year doing experiments, planning experiments, analyzing the results and writing a paper. You think you should put my name, but I may not feel so. I do not feel responsible for what is, what is that you have done. I only gave an idea. So it is very important that each author owns a responsibility of some aspect of the work, some intellectual contribution. Just not just giving the idea, okay. So I think it will become clear when we see what is bad authorship, okay. I have discussed all these things uh, in the uh, lecture before, an authorship like a gift authorship, honorary, insignificant, ghost and without permission. You thought I gave you the idea and you could just put my name, right, without even asking me, but I may not feel so. I might feel that you are, I do not trust the way you do the work. I do not like the way you do a analysis. I do not trust that that is the correct way to do, but my name is being associated with a bad work. So, it is your fault to have included my name without my permission, okay. So, these are different situations. Now, I will just stop here and allow you to uh, come up with uh, discussions or uh, 
any comments or questions around who can be an author, who cannot be an author. If you have come across some situations where you are found in a very tricky position, you thought somebody should not be the author and they were forced to be put an author. So, let us discuss many of these issues openly and try and find some kind of uh, guidelines or uh, uh, principles over which we can uh, work together. Okay? So, I am going to reset the questions now and I want you to uh, give comments, raise questions on this question of who is an author, who is not an author. We will come to the order of authorship later, but currently we will just restrict to who is an author and who is not an author. On that topic, if you have questions and comments. So, think about for 5 minutes and then I am going to reset. Think about for 5 minutes, if you have come across some situation and uh, discuss with your neighbor and ask if that is the appropriate situation to be discussed and then I will reset the hand raise. Okay, so, I have reset it now. So, if you have any questions or comments, so please uh, come ahead. So, let us have a Knowledge Institute of Technology. Knowledge Institute. Uh, just I am uh, uh, studying some literature survey and I am uh, applying it for my work and I am writing my paper and when I am writing, uh, I am using some uh, technical terms or uh, technical phrases which cannot be uh, rephrased uh, by my own words. Can I uh, use it, uh, whether it will be accounted as a plagiarism or uh, should I use it as a reference? Uh, I should put the reference mark in the my part of the work. Uh, so, we discussed this point earlier, but I will just reiterate once more. The question is, if I use there are technical terms that you are not finding equivalent alternatives. Yes, if you do not find equivalent alternatives, you must use only the original phrase. But usually, it is only one or two words which can be that original. If it is more than four words, it is usually a concept which can be written in a different way. You will not have four keywords coming together, usually it is one or two other words in the sentence. So, yes, you have to use as if it is original definition and there are no equivalent synonyms you must use only the original keywords. However, you keep a thumb rule as three, 3 words, not more than 3. Usually, more than 3 you will have non-technical words which are coming which can be easily replaced by equivalent words. Okay. Let us go to uh, Federal Institute of Science and Technology. You know, I was just worried about plagiarism of hiring ideas or copying ideas and presenting it in your research paper at the ideal level. Second, language part, you are simply copying it and appropriating it as one song. So, these two level, idea that is content level, language part which is expression level. So, how can a teacher, uh, I mean, bring to the notice of a student that there is plagiarism taking place in both these areas. What can be our way of detecting plagiarism? Yeah, it is a very good question. Let me just reiterate your question for the benefit of others. Um, so, the question is there are two levels of plagiarism. One is the idea level which is content and other is the actual expression or the language. Now, if you take look at uh, most of the plagiarism checkers, they only look for um, language level copying. So, content level or idea level copying cannot be, uh, all the uh, ideas can be rewritten very beautifully, but the idea is copy copied. Unfortunately, there is no way to detect it. So, but that is why we have something called as a peer review. Now, if somebody is working in a particular area and uh, you have taken a work from somebody else, but not given the uh, 
citation to the original work, it possibly will get caught in the peer review. But again, uh, it can go, uh, we can miss that also. So, there is, it is only a human, at the moment only a human can detect uh, uh, this kind of idea level uh, plagiarism. We still do not have artificial in intelligence for that. Uh, but again, how to prevent it is a question that can come only by inculcating the ethics uh, among the students. We cannot, we should just inculcate that it is uh, as bad uh, as to copy an idea as to probably kill your friend, right. So, somebody has done it and you are not giving them credit is as good as uh, killing his work or killing him. So, it is that kind of uh, ethics that we need to inculcate and it is uh, it is really difficult, we are all in a same boat that way. Uh, thank you for raising this question. Vidya Pratishthan. Yeah, I am answering to your question uh, who is the author. Okay, according to me, the author is the one who, according to me, the author is the one who originates the content from the existing work or completely from a new idea. And he should be able to put them in proper words with some formal or he should be able to put some words. So, is the author. Uh, good. So, can you share any, uh, I would like all of you to think about some uh, anecdotes where you were put in the situation where you cannot, you are not able to uh, come out of a, um, an embarrassing place or something where you asked to do something which you did not want to, you were asked to put somebody's name as author, but you did not want to put their name. How did you come out of that situation? What do you think is right to do and so on? Like sometimes what happens, sir, for example, uh, let us say someone is a guide for me in an academic institution, but he has given uh, maybe a little idea or little information, but the whole work will be done by a student. So, in that case, maybe uh, from personal point of view or whatever the gift you say, in that respective, I may give his name as an author, but might be he is not an author. But due to some personal relation, we may put. Uh, so, are you talking about the guide uh, or guide in some other institute? Guide means uh, the one who guides me, I mean or, or one who has given a topic or one who has given an objective, but not exactly, uh, uh, he is not one who is working or he is not carrying the experiment, but the experiment will be carrying by the student, but due to that like since he has given an objective, like I am putting his name as an author. Okay, so uh, this again uh, would be subjective, uh, very uh, specific to that uh, particular paper. But in general, a guide is not just supposed to give a topic and leave it at that. Okay, guide does not simply uh, define a problem and leave it at that. At every stage, they are supposed to guide you. They are supposed to uh, uh, show you which way to take, show you which way not to take okay? and once the results are there, they help you analyze it. Okay? So, it is very, you are right, there are situations where there are people who are um, guiding, you are supposed to be guides, but only state the problem and expect their name to be there. Even in uh, big uh, uh, institution, uh, you have such cases, but they are very rare. Usual cases, a guide is supposed to um, give a broad indication or a broad indication of the um, nature, uh, where to look for answer, where not to look and so on. So, in that case, there is an intellectual contribution, there is a significant intellectual contribution in uh, analyzing the results. Usually, it will be the analysis of result and writing of the paper, organizing the paper, all that intellectual inputs go into it. So, it is not just the idea alone or problem statement alone. Okay. So, let us go to uh, D Y Patel College of Engineering. Yes, D Y Patel, do I have any questions, comments? My question is, you, you said 
the contribution of author, author is either, either nil or very less contribution it is said how do you define the barrier line for this contribution of an author whether nil or less this is one question secondly i want to say that uh, the very often it is said for the authors that uh, the contribution should be it should have a novelty it is said but very often is we see that novelty or originality to project that is hard to do it for every person there are chances also that a person may not having novelty in his work but he has done really commendable job practical job perhaps a good application in engineering application maybe so why should not be can cannot be called as a uh, novelty too okay uh, let me just repeat your question for sake of others there are you two things that you asked one is uh, how do you uh, differentiate the extent of work done by somebody between uh, uh, no work done and very little work done and the second question is uh, about novelty somebody might have got something new to do but somebody else might have got uh, might have worked very hard but not a very new idea and so on so will they be considered as an author is that correct it may be having a practical implications also rather uh, uh, societal work Correct. Engineering applications to the society or rural area. So, to give an example, is a power factor improvement in engineering. It's an old one actually, but if it is done in large area like uh, uh, pumps in rural areas to improve the power factor, it may not be no novelty, but it is a practical application too. If it is applied for many areas, rural areas or so villages, why should not be called uh, a novelty too? Uh, true, you are uh, very correct. So the question is, uh, we are not now talking about. we are not saying that uh, only persons who have novel contribution have to be authors no that is not right persons who have significant intellectual contributions i'll just show you that definition again significant intellectual contribution now significant intellectual contribution means it need not be new the the idea itself may not be new but just that you are doing it for the first time in uh, uh, for this one that is also in a sense a new thing okay so the idea of doing it in 1 uh, kilowatt is one thing the idea doing it at 100 kilowatt is another thing so that itself is new so uh, that is not a question that is still an intellectual contribution that you do to uh, finally see that outcome some engineering as you said uh, do it on a large farm uh, whatever example that you gave that is certainly considered an intellectual uh, contribution now the, your second question so novelty the so summary is it's just not novelty uh, the novelty might have you can interpret novelty in a different way just by just doing it for a large scale is also a novel thing now where it will be published is a question there might be journals which publish this kind of work but there might not be journals many journals may not accept this kind of work which is okay but there may be journals you, there may be places you don't even have to submit it as a journal article you might just go and carry it out and show that it works so that is a different thing that that will be recognized in a different way as a development activity as an implementation activity so that is a different thing your other question is how to distinguish between somebody who has not done any work and somebody who has done little work so again these are uh, some things that norms that you have to define so uh, in um, in many labs in the us they clearly have defined rules before they take up the project that is very important you have to define the rules before a project starts if you keep changing the rules as the project is progressing then you are you might be biased towards a particular student suppose that there is a student whom you don't like and then you change the rule that no you have you should have done uh, uh, 10 experiments only then i can count it earlier you said 5 experiments now you change it to 10 experiments this is an example so if you change your rules as you progress then there is no meaning of having a rule you might want to change it for the next student 
but not now. So, having a predefined criteria, okay, if it is an experimental project, I expect that to be an author, you must have done so much amount of work that might be measured in terms of time, it measured in terms of experiments okay, and so on. So, that is saying some minimum limits that you have to have this much amount of work to be called as an author, predefine it before the work starts. Similarly, if it is an analysis, you have to have at least derived these equations without which is not existing in the literature, you define it beforehand. Then you can be called as an author. Okay, so, these are predefined conditions that you set to be called as an author. So, then there, there is no conflict. If there are four students working, each of them has contributed so much, then all four students are authors in this work. Okay. So, it is very important that you define these things, let people know, let your students know, let your department head know, let your principal know that this is what I am following. Then next time when the principal says, comes and asks you, why have you not included my name in your paper, you have an answer. You say that this is the principle I followed and this is the way I would like to uh, determine my authors. Okay. So, we have just 10 more uh, minutes, uh, we have looked at who the author is. Uh, now, the order of authors. Now, order of authors is again a tricky thing. Many people, there is no one answer for all those things. Typical uh, methods that are followed are the, uh, there is a descending order of contribution. So, you decide that, okay. so previously you have decided that if I cross this limit, you consider an authors. So, how much you exceed that limit? The person who exceeds the most is considered the first author, then the next author and so on. So, this also you, the criteria for this also you pre-decide before starting the work or you ha just have the criteria beforehand, do not change the criteria while doing the this one. Usually the communicating author, the lead author okay, is the lead of the group. Who, who has given the idea, who is guiding the students, who analyzes, helps in analyzing the results, who helps in writing up the paper or rewriting the paper, they are usually last, unless the extent of contribution of the lead author is itself so significantly high compared to their students work, students simply did experiments without any analysis, then there is a reason to put the lead author as the first author. Otherwise, usually the lead author is the last, others are coming decreasing order and then the lead author. So, these are some typical uh, methods that are followed. Uh, some bad practices in this are, uh, you need to decide on the order of authorship together. So, what usually happens which is not desirable is only one person as a say on who, who is the authorship, who constitutes the authorship and I will decide in which order I will put. That is not a good way. Instead of telling that you will come first, you will come second, I will come first, I will come last, instead of saying that state the principle, state a principle, agree on a principle among the possible authors and then ask each of them to come up with an order based on the principle. So, if you uh, base it on a principle, write down the principle and say that okay, these are the principles all of us agree that who should be the author and what order it has to come. And then each of us work among ourselves and write down okay, by this principle this person is the first, this person is second and so on. And then you all exchange notes among yourself and find out okay, you might find that all of you agree or maybe there is a small discrepancy okay, and that you can resolve. But it is very important that this principle is clear among the, uh, especially among the guide and the students that what principle was used to determine the order of authorship. 
Okay. So, in another uh, 5 minutes that we have, I will reset and uh, we will take some quick questions or discussions on this topic of order of authorship. Amal Jyoti College of Engineering. Sir, I have a doubt actually. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, I did my MTech in an institution where I did my project and there I have a gate there. So, we two together publish a paper. Uh, right now, I am working in another institute where I want to continue this work with the help of my this institute. So, it is, does I need to get the permission from the gate who is in the another institute or I can publish myself uh, without his name, can I publish my paper alone? That is my doubt. So, the question is you had you are working on a particular area and you already have a publication with your MTech guide. Now, you have come out of that institution, MTech institution, you are working on another institution where you want to work in the similar area, the same area, but another problem. Do I need to take permission from my MTech guide? Do I need to include uh, their name in my work? So, again, the, the principle is what is important. The principle is who constitutes an author? The person, your guide was responsible for educating you on the problem, on the area while you were there. You were there, you paid fees, they taught you, you learned from them, you had a paper, that is all. After you have come out, you might have had some intellectual discussions with them. Okay. Some discussions, they are like floating ideas. They, he might say that this might work, this might not work. Unless you have a consistent and continuous collaboration or uh, criticism, you are doing, he is also putting equal effort, if not equal, significant effort, then I do not think that person should qualify. The simple reason is the principle that does the person have significant intellectual contribution. If somebody is just sitting in a far institute who just taught you or even he might have given an idea to the new problem that you are working on now, but just giving an idea does not constitute an authorship. You do not even have to take permission. It might be a courtesy to tell them that I am working on this just to make sure that he does not work on that problem and solve it before you. You might just want to tell it as a matter of information, but it is not required that you should have and it is actually wrong to have their name. Some people have the name just because if you have your guide's name, maybe it is easier to publish, but that is wrong. One doubt I have is if I am doing this experiment, that the present experiment, if I am doing in new material, that is personally is pure from the other ex the old experiment that I already conducted. So, that is, is in that state, what should I do? So, so long as you are doing a new, you're, the same process you are doing on a new material. So, there is it is still a different thing. For this particular project that you are handling, there is no intellectual contribution. You ask a question, you simply go at the list that I have shown here. You ask these three questions, has that person helped in planning the experiment that you are doing now, not previously? Is that person executing the present work now? Is that person analyzing the results that you have got now, not the previous one? Okay, These three. And again, I have listed here. This is one of the best practice criteria that an author is considered somebody who has definitely done one of planning, execution or analysis and has contributed to the writing, rewriting, reviewing the manuscript number 2 and 3 approves the final manuscript. That is very important. Now, you might think that it is nice, it is a courteous thing to uh, include your former guide's name, but your former guide may not think so. It might be an insult to him that you you are including his name even without his permission, even with his approval of what you have done. 
he can easily think that I don't trust the way you do the work when you went out of my institute. Why did you put my name? So it is very important that you have every author approves the final manuscript. It's very important. Every author has got some contribution to the writing of the manuscript. Either it is first draft, second draft, correcting uh, something, okay? And it has to be one of these three things, planning, planning of the experiments, now, not the previous one. Execution means actually carrying out the experiments and analyzing the results, either one of these things and this and this. This is a very solid criteria which is followed in most uh, top universities abroad. So if you try to follow this and try to inculcate this among your students, hopefully someday we will also have a good system where the students appreciate why somebody is considered an author and why somebody is not. Okay? I think we have reached the uh, time, so we have to officially close, but if anybody wants to continue for 5 minutes, uh, I can still, I am just going to reset uh, the button now. Thank you. So officially the uh, class is closed now. So if anybody still wants to ask questions, Mount Zion College of Engineering. Good evening. I would like to know what is the minimum allowable, allowable percentage of plagiarism in thesis as well as in the journal paper. Okay, so uh, I, we have answered this question before, but I will uh, repeat it. So first of all, percentage is, if you go by strict terms, 0, minimum is 0, but strictly we cannot go by, so I, we can definitely say that something more than 20 percent is really bad, something less than 5 percent is okay. Now between 5 and 20 percent. Uh, you have to be very subjective and you need to look at what has been copied. If it is few technical words, I mean technical words, it is not full sentences. If it is a few technical words which cannot, which does not have a equivalent synonyms and if it is like a, a few equations which are coming like that, similar to the uh, original thing, those are acceptable. So, these are very subjective. Uh, sir, can you tell about the differentiate the primary author as well as the corresponding author? Uh, the corresponding author or the lead author is somebody who has, who is the lead of the group in a sense. Usually in most of the uh, publications which is done in universities, uh, the lead author is the guide or the communicating author who has worked on the subject for a large period of time. And uh, a primary author is somebody who has done the particular ex uh, execution of the experiment more than analysis. Usually, it is expected that persons who are beginning in their career are just beginning to learn to analyze the results. Okay, so they mostly execute what is being told and then carry out some minimal analysis. So, but most of the work is done by the uh, primary author. Most of the first or two drafts is written by the primary author. Mm, the analysis of results is done by the lead author because they have little more experience in looking at the results and looking at uh, shortcomings and looking at alternate ways to analyze and so on. LDRP Institute of Technology. Sir. UGC, University Grants Commission, has come up with a scheme to evaluate the, uh, the work of the teachers. Now, in that, uh, they state that the first author would get 60% uh, of the credit for the paper, while the remaining authors, uh, the for remaining 40% get distributed equally between the remaining authors. So, this somehow uh, supports the tendency for the guide to keep his name first, which I, I think uh, contradicts with uh, your, the scheme presented by you uh, or the principles that you have stated. So uh, do you have any view on this? Yeah, so I, I have not heard of this, but if it is such a thing, it is very unfortunate. Uh, I believe that if even if such a thing is there, 
it should exclude the guide, it should exclude the lead or communicating author that should even if that criteria is there in a sense it is good because uh, usually the primary author is the one who does a lot and uh, in that sense it is okay to give 60 percent. But uh, putting the guide's name in front is certainly not desirable and uh, if you have your uh, uh, say you please write to UGC and uh, to say that they should include a clause that uh, uh, guide, guide's name first is not acceptable. Yeah, I do not agree with that. Yes, go ahead please. Uh, sir, as you mentioned that, uh, that we are supposed to get a final approval for our work from uh, so and so uh, uh, for the contributor, from the contributor. What if the uh, contributor, I mean the author is famous, suppose and he, if he does not refer our manuscript. I mean because uh, I mean, many times it happens that suppose author is a famous author and if I would recite or if I would work on his idea, I mean that is intellectual contribution as you mentioned. If I would take his intellectual contrib contribution consideration and later on if I would work on that and if I send him for a final approval and what if, it, if he does not refer my, my uh, um, I mean manuscript which I sent him. So, first of all if that person has not given any intellectual contribution which is what you are saying, he has taught you 5 years ago and it to, for this particular problem he has not given any intellectual contribution, he does not even qualify it is one of the bad authorships to have persons who are just famous and have them as uh, honorary authors. It is a bad practice. You must not have them in the first place at all. Forget the question of they do not have the time because they are famous they, they do not have the time to read the papers. So, if they do not have the time to read the papers it is a very good reason not to have them as an author as I said here they should have had one of execution planning or analysis and something some contribution to the manuscript either initial draft reviewing the draft or at least in reviewing the intellectual content even if you are not looking at the English language and the grammatical corrections at least the intellectual correction if they do not have time for any one of this it is a nice reason to say we will not have them as an author. Okay. Jawaharlal Nehru College of Sir, uh, why do not the academic world come together to uh, why do not the academic will come together to control the mushrooming uh, agencies who, who tend to put across ISB and ISS and publication and take many of the young research scholars for a ride. Is there no mechanism because plagiarism starts from there because there is somebody who is prompting me. Uh, to take up a young research scholar does not know uh, whether the uh, process of uh, a true process of verification is done. Uh, so, can you just repeat uh, this what is it that people are doing I, I did not get the first portion what are uh, you. No, these uh, young, young research scholar get influenced by many agencies which tends to provide ISB and ISS and number and then uh, say that it is a, a refereed journal. So, there is no way to cross verify. Uh, okay, okay. See, I think the, the way I would uh, look at it is in a very local way. I do not know how to tackle it on a, a large scale. I would simply educate my students to identify what are good journals and then publish in them. I think if we are able to uh, train them to identify good journals. Uh, I think that is uh, more important at least I do not have uh, any ideas about I have not heard of this first of all I am hearing for the first time I am sorry I am not aware of it. But if there is such thing that is really happening then um, my own way is to uh, tell the students which is which are the good journals and not to publish in anything else that is uh, that is all I can I have control on my own students which I can tell them when they are here. Is there any parameter to identify a, a good journal? Is it based on the number of hits or, or how do we evaluate an age, a journal which is good and which is bad? Um, I think you need to 
so okay this can be developed only o over a period of time uh, if we see where so you go to a conference and say you listen to people's talk are you able to judge whether the talk is rigorous done well and so on so you are able to identify persons who are doing uh, sincere and rigorous work just see where they are publishing that is one step to find out which are good journals so that's why we have some some beginner a reputed journal uh, might deter him yeah uh, i'm not saying reputed in sense very reputed but even uh, some uh, say not so reputed journals of course a good uh, thing is the impact factor but at least to, to beginning with you can start with an impact factor for uh, uh, beginners but again there is no real beginner that way right everybody has got a guide and so on so in a sense we are not put into the world of uh, scientific publication uh, from nowhere we are only slowly coming into this we come through we exposed we are exposed to good research from our guides and we transmit that to our students so it is not that i came from uh, my btech and mtech and suddenly i found that which is good journal and which is bad no i spent 5 uh, 7 years doing my phd with my guide and the way i saw them working other people in my department i saw them working and that's how i gained a knowledge of judgment of which is good and which is bad and that is how i try to tell my students which is good and which is bad so i think i don't see any other uh, way that this can be done more analytically like seeing uh, just the uh, uh, just the impact factor or just some other h index and so on thank you psg college in the case where there are two equally contributed authors and the first name may be my friend and the second name is me when i go to an interview they take only the first person to be the main uh, paper presenter and the second person as a contributor just a helper so in that case how can we uh, choose whose name should be presented as the first uh, writer and as the second correct so see it is whenever you find uh, mm, a work in which there are uh, people who are having uh equal contributions usually you will find a second paper where the order is shifted because suppose in a particular work you have done equally as your friend but your name came second but certainly there would have been another uh, similar work where you would have done little more than not that friend maybe somebody else so it is expected that at least in as uh, one or two of them you have a significantly more contribution than the others so that you can use it certainly but of course in certain cases where say you have only one publication so far and you don't have the second one uh the best thing would be to ask your supervisor to uh, write a, a a letter or a certificate mentioning that the contribution has been equal and there is another work which is uh, in progress where uh, this lady is this girl is has done a significantly more work it is under way and so on it's better to uh, or even all the authors this will be uh, ideal if all the authors of that contribution agree that say your friend yourself your guide all of them state in a, a paper that uh, both the first and the second author have contributed equally in fact in certain journals you can use this statement as part of your publication just like an acknowledgement section in the last section you can explicitly state uh say leela has contributed the to these these experiments suma has contributed to these these experiments vijay has done this 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 analysis okay and all of them are to be considered as equal contributors so if you state this upfront in the paper itself that is the best thing 
okay that is the best thing that you can do that you cannot change that fact later if you have not done that what you can do is at least when you go to an interview you get such a statement written and signed by all three authors that all of them agree that you have done equally as the others there are one more question uh, related to that and uh, so there are certain universities which are uh, uh, using that the guidelines of scopus and they do give the list scopus indexed uh, journals and uh, in that case there are n number of journals where there were no publications at all from indian uh, authors at all and for the last 19 years there were uh, 19 or 20 years for the no indian author has been uh, recognized for such journal publications at all so even then we do write to them and uh, it's immediately rejected even though we have been using that uh, uh, the broad uh, or out uh, the spectrum of uh, the journal uh, so they have stated that uh, this is not in the scope of the journal they immediately reject that so considering that point why why uh, the universities have not come forward to revise that because these journals are meant for only european side or uh, in the american uh, authors alone have been recognized and uh, so why this kind of uh, insisting on that the indian writers to publish uh, uh, papers in such journals at all so is there any revision at all uh, to be done uh, in the case of that as a high performance institution like iit uh, why can't iits can give some certain guidelines that these were the possible journals you can publish so that uh, the universities can take up a model from iits and they can insist on publishing uh, journals from that list which you have given no i don't think any iit should do this kind of do this and do that kind of stuff it might be a personal one to one basis that if you know somebody in iit working in your area you can ask them for the advice but why should iit come and tell for the all of india that you should publish in this i don't think any iit will take that stand officially and they should not also but however if you ask me on a personal basis that uh, you and i are working on a similar area i might know some journals which you you don't know i might willing to share that as a personal information as a friend or as an advice but i don't think it can be an officially stated that you should publish here and not there and uh, i don't think that that will work uh, of course there are uh, very recent attempts within our own indian community among this top uh, indian academy of sciences and engineering to come with uh, come up with indian journals of high quality uh, the problem Uh, which will be mitigated of the kind of problems that you are saying will get mitigated that only foreign unit universities accept this one so the uh, problem with many indian journals the quality is not there so if we are able to ensure a good quality and accept and reject papers as well then i think we will be able to build a community of good uh, publications uh, within uh, india which are respected at least there may be many topics which are not relevant to the us community or to the western community but something which is here but which is done in a rigorous way so there are efforts to this uh, in this direction but let's it will take time to uh, uh, manifest okay excel there in a four session that you have mentioned that the three type of process you mentioned the understand observe and judgment You, your question was for the scientific method what are the different passes see scientific method is a, a methodology or a process of doing research or doing your day to day activities the three passes are with respect to reading a paper how to read a paper okay so if you have any more questions please type it out i think that is a better way i will move on to the next institute and come back to you later if you still have questions i'll go to medicaps institute of technology hello so thanks for waiting so i have two questions uh sir first one is related to plagiarism and second related to authorship uh sir the first thing is uh, one student of mine he had completed his thesis work and i was asked to check for plagiarism 
sir i uh, the guide has been the guide had been shifted to me earlier he had a different guide so when i checked this work for plagiarism it was free of plagiarism but later on when the external came he checked it using turnitin and it contained plagiarism so sir what is the uh, like correlation between different tools and turnitin because uh, it was showing 0% plagiarism in different tools which were freely available on the net um so the second situation is related to authorship one of my students he was placed in a company and so he had to leave early the college so he asked me whether he can publish his paper i said yes uh, he included my name and later on it uh, contained plagiarism so sir what should i do in such situation okay very good question uh, i will repeat the question for others the first question is uh the different softwares gave different results and you thought that the first software didn't did not give any plagiarism and you accepted it uh, unfortunately as i said many free softwares have this problem they don't have extensive database search and turnitin has so if your college can afford it at least ask them to get a few licenses of turnitin and then use it for the uh, uh different classrooms uh i don't know of any other equivalent it might be uh, there but if it is there uh, i don't know so we have found turnitin to be uh, very good so we just go by experience as i said that uh, something does and something does not uh, there is uh, no such uh, proper study which has given us um which is better and which is not in general turnitin has got a very large database of all the research papers of existing of phd theses and several other uh, documents so that's why uh, turnitin is good your second question of your student uh, uh, putting your name and then later it was found to be plagiarized is precisely the point that i said that each author has to have an ownership now when you agreed to put your name as a author you agreed to put based on ownership of some responsibility now if i go back to the points that i mentioned here did you do some of planning execution maybe you did some analysis did you carefully review the document no you didn't or maybe you did but the plagiarism checker did not catch it and did you approve the final manuscript so when you approve a final manuscript you have taken responsibility that anything that goes wrong also you carry partial responsibility anything that is nice to it you get the credits anything that is bad you lose the credibility so that is why these principles which i have listed here are pretty much time tested and it is recommended that you use these principles very thoroughly and you understand the meaning of this thank you for pointing out this example that others will know that they are also they can also be subject to similar uh, uh, situations and they need to be careful before accepting to be just put as an free author just like that does it answer your question uh, so one more question Uh, when you were just telling about the authorship of technical work who is the author of technical work the third point was some publications require identification of contribution this point is not clear can you please elaborate yeah some publications require identification of contribution uh, it means that for example like this now uh, what is your name madam Akriti, Akriti from Madhya. Akriti, and what is your friend's name there? Pallavi. Pallavi. Okay. When the uh, contribution essentially means uh, putting a statement in the paper, like uh, just before the acknowledgement section, saying that Pallavi contributed by planning these experiments, Akriti executed fifty uh, percent of the experiments, Pallavi also contributed. 50% of the experiments and let's say your guide uh, shankar 
uh, did the analysis and wrote the paper ok. So, now let us say Pallavi is the first author and Akriti is the second author you have provided a justification you have provided uh, what you have identified in print what each of you have contributed and since all of you Pallavi, Akriti and Shankar have approved the uh, manuscript it means that you have accepted the contribution of each other. So, that is what it means by identifying the contributions made. Does that answer your question? Yes, Thank you, but uh, you have mentioned that some publications require, some publications require. Now, what are these publications which require this kind of identification? I think it is mostly in uh, medico journals, uh, some open access journals and some uh, new journals have this explicitly. Traditional journals did not have it, but these are uh, principles and ethics that are coming into uh, mainstream now. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Have a nice day. So, we will go to symbiosis. Symbiosis is still waiting there. Are you there, symbiosis? Thank you for waiting. So, you have a question. While including the name of institute in the paper, we should include the name of research institute or uh, the job institute where we do the job. Um, so, there are uh, one is research institute, what is the other one? Other is the uh, institute where we do the job or ok. So, uh, you the reason why affiliation is given is for two purposes definitely the let us say you are working in one college and you are doing the uh, experiment in some research institute definitely the research institute contribution should be there because they provided you with uh, uh, the facilities to do it. Now, it is also important that you acknowledge and you give your uh, parent institute the institute which you work because they have provided you with say leave or some other concessions to do your research. So, uh, given that it is important that you mention both the institutes. Another question sir, uh, uh, in the review paper while writing the review paper the author must be from the expert from that field or should have published number of papers or is it possible to write a new author uh, review paper, is it possible? Uh, in principle it is possible except that it might be difficult to publish. First of all it will be difficult to write because somebody who has not worked in a particular area and just coming afresh and writing a review paper is slightly difficult. You need to have done uh, it is it is not possible to do it it is itself a research on itself. You you work on you look at lo lot of uh, publications you understand them it cannot be done in 6 months or 1 year it probably will take couple of years to do it for a fresh person. Somebody who has already worked on some things it is ok, but fresh person it is difficult. And publication of that is also little difficult there might be journals which will accept it, but normally review papers are done by invitation. Why? I mean there are actually suppose let us say uh, one author has given one kind of one algorithm and that is referred by second author and uh, if I am re referring the second author's algorithm should I cite to both the authors or should I cite to the first author? Uh, you have to cite, so if the second author is not changed anything from the first one you have to cite the first author, but if the second author has uh, used say 90 percent and made 10 percent change and you are using all the change then you need to cite both of them. Essentially if there is a significant contribution from a particular work you should cite it. Uh, the first question which I asked about the research center and uh, job institute is that job institute should be acknowledge, uh, acknowledge uh, in the acknowledgement part of the paper or can I refer both the affiliations in uh, below my name? No, no, it has to be below your name. The job institute has given you a leave or has been paying you for the uh, time you spent there. 
uh, in the because it, it is it indirectly participating in the research ok. They are not giving any uh, facilities to do it, but they are indirectly participating in giving you a opportunity to work. So, it, it is uh, good to actually acknowledge that in the affiliation itself not as an acknowledgement section. Because you are actually affiliated to the place you work, you are not affiliated to the place you do the research in. Your affiliation, affiliation is the college or place of work where uh, you are being paid. Okay, thank you very much. Let me go to the uh, last couple of institutes that are waiting there. Walchand Institute, thank you for waiting. Uh, my work is specifically related to research work that is use of paddy straw for erosion control. When finding out one of the properties like drippability of the paddy straw geomesh, I have uh, validated, I have obtained some results and validated it by using the SPSS uh, software. Oh. But then also I came to other paper wherein uh, they have used, uh, they have found out the drippability property on coir geotextile. So, the steps in the uh, validation analysis are almost same. So, will it be amount to plagiarism? Uh, you mean the steps are the same, but the material is different? I could not get it clearly. Uh, but then should I, I have also given his citation uh, reference also. So, will this be sufficient uh, or uh, because the uh, after using the software, the steps are almost same and even uh, interpretations would be also same. But the material is different. Yes, material different and form of material is also different. For example, it is there co is coir mesh coir textile, geo textile and mine is a uh, paddy straw geo mesh and mine is a handmade uh, product, theirs is a machine made product and that is of different material that is coir. Yeah. So, uh, so plagiarism here it is not a plagiarism of expression, it, it, it can be called plagiarism of idea, but you are not doing a plagiarism of idea in the methodology. Methodology if certain things have to be done by a particular method and it has to be analyzed in a particular way that is not plagiarism. Now, suppose somebody had done the exactly same material as yours and you rewrite it in a different way that is plagiarism. In your case, the material is different, nobody has worked on that material by that method before. So, certainly it is not plagiarism, you need to make sure that the sentences that you choose does not be, it is not the same as. Uh, what is given in that work, only then it will be considered as a plagiarism. So, long as you change the expression, the material is certainly different. So, it is a knowledge which does not exist before and you are providing a new knowledge about this material. So, it is not plagiarism, you need to just take care that you do not express the same sentences or phrases. Sir, one more question. Uh, Suppose the form of the material is uh, different, for example, as I said, it is, had it been a geotextile uh, of paddy straw, which is not possible because it cannot be converted into thread or, but had it been a textile and mine is the uh, form is different, for example, had made geomesh, that would it have been uh, uh, plagiarism in that case? No, see, so long as you are doing for a different material, it is not, it is definite, it does not matter you just see if the same material has been done before. If it has not been done, it is a new work. See, whether it is significantly new contribution and all is a different uh, aspect, but it is certainly not plagiarism. Whether your, your uh, scientific contribution is uh, significant, that only you can say it is not significant scientific contribution, I, I, somebody has done for material A, I am doing for material B, same procedure. It is not significant scientific contribution, but that is not bad. May, most of the research in science progresses because there are few people who are doing really, really new work and many people who are doing repetitive work. Repetitive work has its value, it is not bad. What you are doing is a repetitive work. What you have done is a repetitive work, but that does not, it is not plagiarism. 
because there is a new material which has not been done before, the procedure is the same, the instrument is the same, analysis is the same, so what? But this material has not been done before. You might not find journals which will accept it because it is small incremental work, but that is a different thing, it is not plagiarism. Sushila Danchand, thank you for waiting. Sir, I have two questions to you. Uh, one is regarding technical details and the other is uh, regarding plagiarism. I would start with plagiarism. Uh, you mentioned that uh, there are different softwares and uh, we have been using at the point uh, when the discussion was going on on plagiarism. We had a short discussion here in the hall and uh, we were unsure whether, uh, you know, uh, similarities in sentences and some of the words can be considered as plagiarism or uh, is there any mechanism to sort it out? I mean, uh, when uh, different ideas are, uh, if uh, any idea of a different author is being stated as our own, we consider that that is a plagiarism. But uh, when you check plagiarism or your text on internet, there are number of words and sentences which are similar to the sentences and words you have written. So what to do in that case? Words are similar is okay. If it's, you should, the, uh, as I said before, if there are technical keywords which are not replaceable, then it is okay to have the same words. But as a thumb rule, you keep it as three words. Not more than three words at a, at a stretch should be same or very similar. Try to have, usually the problem comes with non-technical English words, normal commonly used English words. The problem comes there. It, problem is not with respect to technical words. Usually technical words, you will, you will not find more than one or two words, two words at a time. So that is not considered plagiarism. So what is your other question? About grammatical words. Oh no, so any other words in normal English which is used, which it is there for more than uh, three words, that you have to rewrite. You, re, you have to rewrite the whole idea. So, it, see, suppose there is a paragraph with five sentences. You rewrite each sentence, but exactly convey the same idea. It is in a sense plagiarism. You do not need to actually write all five sentences. You can summarize the five sentences in one or two sentences.